80% water. Unfortunately, it only runs for two or three minutes and it'll die. This is the only way I could pipe this to actually get it to run an extended period of time and put moisture into this system and make it continuously run without a misfire. This is the only way I could pipe it to get it to work. The bubblers were only a temporary. I tried, uh, uh, I believe, seven different bubbler designs and none of them were really consistent at all. This is the most consistent I could get. This is it. The bubblers, I just couldn't get to work. This is a bubbler of, in a sorts. This is a bubbler. The longer it runs, the cooler this is. I think the laws of thermodynamics will actually play out and this will cool down to the point that it won't make dry steam and that motor will die because the plugs will get wet. Of course, you can walk around in the tweak valves all day long and make it run, but if you need a generator out in the country, you don't want to walk around in tweak valves all day if you're going to do something like that. Build a boiler and a, and a steam engine. But then again, like I said, this may not be the most efficient setup. I'm just like everybody else here. I'm experimenting with it too. But so far, I'm not seeing any magic. Just normal physics. Normal thermodynamics. Carbohydrates will burn. I mean, that's how they count calories, you know, sugar, they burn it. They take a measured amount, they burn it. Uh, as long as you got some water with some carbohydrates in it, or water with electrolytes in it, I did use it with urine for extended periods. It's just a, do you have any idea what the smoke off this thing smells like if you pee in one of them jugs and run it all day? Man, it's atrocious. But it works. I don't see it to be any more efficient than what's going on here, though, with just rainwater in a barrel with some, of course, it had some leaves in it to make it brown, but it didn't seem to run a bit better with urine. Once again, you'd have to actually load test it, measure your weight of fuel to the gram. put it on a trailer. I intend to drag it around to some of these alternative energy fairs, maybe flywheel shows, county fairs, stuff like that. And uh, just kind of let people know my experiences so far with, uh, with Paul Pantone's heat that he gave away free on the internet. Anybody can anybody can get the plans for the, uh, the needle and the tees right off the internet. I intend to make these drawings available as well. You can see there's a lot of condensate dripping at the end of that exhaust pipe there where I got a silicone. I intend to put these plans on the, in fact these plans are on the Yahoo group, so, uh, Vortex Heat Exchanger group. These plans are already there. Or these uh, pictures of this is already there. I don't have any plans drawn. Anything. It's definitely using more gas than water. Like I said, it could be due to uh, a deficiency here in the exhaust, the restriction in the exhaust where I've got my plasma needle. I, I could need a bigger tube there. I haven't tried all the angles yet. I don't think anybody's tried all the angles yet. I think there's been a lot of good investigation go on with Geek. And I think Paul Pantone is onto something with the little plasma needle assembly. If nothing else, you see the water going through this. You see it running. It's not missing. Hey, pull water in your gas tank. See he's he's on to something. There's something there. Is it efficient? I don't know. But I'm going to find out.
Okay, this is a mixture of water and gasoline. In both models. Run off vapors only. That's fast. Whoop. Yep, that's it. That's fast as I could get it to run. This is what everybody thinks calling closed loop. There isn't any air going to any of these valves, it's just this valve here is open.